quirkier side of life. The Todd Starnes Commentary. If San Antonio's mayor has his way, citizens opposed to homosexuality on religious grounds would not be allowed to hold public office or apply for government jobs. The city council is considering amending their anti-discrimination policy to specifically protect LGBT workers. Anyone who's demonstrated a bias by word or deed would be banned from the council. The city's Christian community is up in arms. The Family Research Council says the proposed ordinance is dangerous and a flagrant violation of the Constitution. One pastor tells me that church members could be disqualified from city contracts simply for being a member of a Baptist congregation. He says the ordinance is nothing less than a crackdown on people who oppose gay marriage. It certainly seems that way, doesn't it? I'm Todd Starnes. Thank you, Todd Starnes. Always appreciate the rest of the story. May you rest in peace. That would be the man. Yeah. Paul Harvey. Welcome back. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, proudly on AFR Talk. Let's get right to our guest, our good friend, Pastor Aaron Free, Senior Pastor, Knollwood Church, Mobile, Alabama. Love you, Mobile. Love you, Fairhope. Got to tell you, Aaron, first off, big week. Big week. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Crane. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know if I am, you know, because I, I don't have a, a problem with, obviously, people, I don't like it, criticizing my Lord and Savior. I understand it. It's free, free country. Do that. But I don't like people misleading people, and that happens a lot when it comes to talking about Scripture and the life of God on earth, as we know, Jesus Christ. And I guess this bothers me in particular because when I called myself a Christian and I really wasn't reading the Word— Oh, yeah, Jesus is my Savior, sure. Okay, I got the cross resurrected. Okay, it's cool. No, I didn't really understand that. I, I thought I did. I really didn't because you can't because how can you if you really don't get to know Jesus? I say this because I want to make it clear. No problem with people in a free society questioning religion of any kind. Yet we have a scenario here where there is a book written by a man who converted from Islam, or excuse me, converted from Christianity to Islam and has written the book Zealot about Jesus Christ. And he was interviewed on Fox News by the Fox News reporter Lauren Green, religion correspondent. Here's part of that interview that got pretty contentious. Roll it. I want to... I want to clarify, you're a Muslim, so why did you write a book about the founder of Christianity? Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament and fluency in Biblical Greek, who has been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades, who also just happens to be a Muslim. That's what he said there wasn't exactly true, Aaron. Your thoughts on th this interview? I mean, the left loves it because it says, how dare he be questioned about being a Muslim? But Lauren Green was going with information that she had reviewed where he didn't admit to being a Muslim or didn't say he was a Muslim in a previous interview. Uh, he also has these degrees, but none of them are in history. And uh, Robert Spencer has done a great job in pointing out some of the errors in his commentary. What do you make of the book Zealot in the sense of the coverage of it and the questioning of it? Aaron? Well, I think Lauren had done her homework in researching this man's previous book, which was entitled No God But God, which is a book that promotes the future of Islam. And so the reason I believe, Crane, the, the media has attacked Lauren for that pretty forthright, simple question, you know, why are you writing about Jesus? Uh, is there some kind of a religious bias here because you you were Islamic? 
And so the reason why the liberal media is so, uh, you know, in attack mode towards Lauren is because what we're seeing here is a conflict really with Judeo-Christian beliefs. And we live in a culture that is based on moral relativism. There's no standard of moral truth. And if we can remove God from our society, and we, we no longer have accountability, and we live in a very egalitarian culture where all religions lead to God, and we promote universalism, and now there's this new religion called Chrislam, which is a uniting and joining of Islam and Christianity that teaches that Yahweh and Allah are the same gods. And so we know from Scripture, Crane, we're heading towards this one-world religion, and so the Bible is the alarm clock for the world. And so if we can delegitimize Christ and remove his divinity, as this man, Mr. Aslan, uh, attempts to do in his book, uh, then, you know, uh, the liberal ideology scores another win. And so we as Christians believe that the laws of nature and nature's God should govern our lives and our world, and the media is attacking Lauren simply because she's asking this, you know, dynamic question, is there a, li a liberal media bias in writing this book? And the answer to that is yes. And I looked up this man's first book, No God But Allah, and he says in this book that his goal is to reform Islam. And he also says that he wants to see a modern Islamic religion that can compete in the West with Christianity and Judaism. And he says that his greatest calling in life is to defend his faith in Islam. And then he has a piece out recently entitled, Why I Write About Jesus, and he holds to long-standing Islamic beliefs that reject the divinity of Christ. And he says in this piece that faith in Christ is a forgery, the Bible is not God-breathed, Jesus of Nazareth is not God, and these are long-held Islamic beliefs that reject the divinity of Christ. And so he's also a member of a lobbying group for Islamic mullahs. And so for Lauren Green from Fox News to ask this question, is there a, a bias in your book? The answer to that is absolutely yes. But, of course, this whole thing now has turned into uh, a slam against Fox News for even having the audacity to ask such a question. Well, it's it's not surprising that it, it gets turned around like that because we're seeing the Bible, Scripture, being turned into hate speech and and being viewed as hate speech. And we can get to that a little later. I, I want to focus in on Islam and a Muslim writing a book about Christianity, free to do it, obviously, also free to be questioned about the bias, and as you've done your homework big time when it comes to this author, within Islam— is it appropriate, fair, is there a time that you can not tell the truth, you can lie, in order to forward the faith or defend the faith? Absolutely. You can, you can lie, you can tell half-truths or just bold-faced lies in order to promote the Islamic religion. And so, you know, through this man's interview— he told not just half-truths, but he told uh, several lies, you know, some of which he was just not being intellectually honest in his understanding of the New Testament. But uh, he says, I'm a Ph.D. in the history of religions. Uh, he actually has four degrees, not one of which, Crane, is in history. He has a Ph.D. in sociology, a master's in fiction writing, and so it's a false claim to say that he is a Ph.D. in the history of religion. Absolutely false. He also said, I'm a professor of religion. Absolutely false. He said, this is what I do for a living. I'm a professor of religion. Uh, again, a false claim. Actually, what does he do? He's an associate professor of creative writing. Because, again, his Ph.D. is not in history. It's in fiction writing. And so uh, all through his book... He makes many false claims, you know, stating that Jesus never, ever claimed to be the Son of God. And, and you know, if we have time, I can refute that, Crane. Well, let's do that right now. We do, and because I've got the greatest team in the world. Brent's moving breaks occasionally to make sure we get this in, and he knows that Afternoons with Aaron sometimes has, a, ha, has to move the break. So you go ahead, my friend. Okay. 
Hmm. Well, is that, a, is that a true statement? In, this yeah. is in his book that Jesus never claimed to be divine. He never claimed to be the Son of God. He also said that the New Testament has no eyewitness accounts of the life of Christ. That's another false claim. John, who was an eyewitness of Christ in John 1.1, 1, 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so John, an eyewitness of Christ's life, says that Jesus the Word was God. Peter, another eyewitness of Christ, in 2 Peter 1.16, said that we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. Each of the Gospels were reports of eyewitness accounts. Uh, John, in, in John 20, Thomas, when he said, I will not believe unless I see the nail prints in his hands and his side. Uh, he said, I will not believe. And so Jesus appeared and said, put your fingers in my hands, put your uh, hand in my side. Thomas knelt and he said these words, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have seen, uh, have not seen yet still believe. He commends Thomas for his belief in him as Lord and God. The woman at the well, uh, she said to Jesus, I know Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. Jesus said in John 4, 25 and 26, I who speak to you am he, a direct a reference to his divinity, that he is the Son of God. Peter's confession, who do you say that I am, Jesus said to Peter. Peter said, you are the Christ. Uh, Mashiach, the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus did not argue with Peter. He said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, Peter, but my Father in heaven has revealed to you this wonderful fact that I am the Messiah, the Son of the living God. John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. And the Jews uh, accused him of blasphemy. Why was that an act of blasphemy? Because they said, you claim to be God. When he made that statement, I and the Father are one. John 13, 13, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. The word there for Lord is the Greek word kurios, God. You call me teacher and God, and you are right, Jesus said. Another claim to his divinity. Get just a couple more, Crane. John 14, 9, mm -hmm. he who has seen me has seen the Father and probably the most significant claim is in John 8:58. Before Abraham was, I am. And this is one of the many I am statements of Christ, which is the word or the name Yahweh. Before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus is basically saying there in John 8:58, I am Yahweh. And then you can take the 300 plus Old Testament references of the coming Messiah. Jesus fill, fulfilled every single one of all the Old Testament prophecies, the place where he would be born, how he would die by crucifixion. He would be in the Davidic line. He would be born of a virgin and on and on, over 300 prophecies. So uh, Jesus, from not just a historical perspective, but from a biblical perspective by his own claims and by the history of the Word of God, is the Son of God. On the flip side, what I want you to answer is something that said a lot about Jesus by sometimes it, people, well, I won't even get into that part. It's, well, yeah, he he's a really good guy, but he, he wasn't the Son of God. He was just a, just a prophet, and uh, you know what? He's a good guy. I like him. And to me, if what you said, which is true, and what he has claimed to be the Son of God, to be the Christ. And they're referring to this, and A, he's done a lot of good things. Yet, if that claim isn't true, Aaron, does that make Jesus a good guy for making it? I don't think so. But we'll get your thoughts on that. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. AFR Talk. When something is happening that threatens human life, emergency dispatchers take the information and get it out to the first responders who then spring into 